right, so let's talk about emergencies. I have to keep reminding myself you didn't do your private pilot training here. So what, what, how we're going to do this, how we're going to teach this, is for engine failure, the acronym we're going to use is ABC. So airspeed, best place to land, and then checklist in that order. All right, so airspeed, best place to land, checklist. Why we do it in that order? One, we want to get the VG so we have our best glide distance, so we have the best yeah. chance of getting wherever we want. We want to do a, we want to find a place to land before we do anything else. In the event the engine doesn't come back on, which is the most likely, I don't know if that most likely, which is a likely scenario, I guess. We want to make sure that we're putting our nose in that direction so we can try to get there. Out here, you can see we've got a lot of places to land. That's not always going to be the case. You know, my biggest fear is losing power somewhere in a densely populated area, right? Then we yep. need to potentially have that maximum glide distance. And then from there, we're going to do checklist. So you're going to do the bold items from memory. Um, and then once you do that, you're always, always, always going to pull back up the checklist, even if you think you have it memorized, to make sure you did all the steps. And then from there, we're going to do our emergency landing checklist. So open up your quick reference guide real quick, or your checklist guide. So if you go to the home screen, so on the home screen, all these red ones are the, the most important emergencies, right? You also yeah. notice you have these hot keys in the bottom, but this emergency landing checklist is what we're going to do after any emergency before we land, if yeah. above 1,500 AGL. If you're not above 1,500 AGL, just do the best you can. All right, so emergency engine failure in flight. This is probably the most common one, but as you can see, airspeed 76, best place to land, select that, and then from there, when our engine fails, the most likely culprit of that is gonna be fuel starvation. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna be fuel pop on, fuel selector fullest, mixture rich, magnetos, cycle, alt air, open. What checklist version is this, 4.3? Okay, cool, we got the most updated checklist in that order. So these bold items, that's what you need to know from memory. And then from there, if power not restored, execute emergency landing, and then you'd go to the emergency yeah. landing, and that's when you would do the rest of it. Okay. Cool. Then let's talk about engine fire for a second. So engine fire in flight. So there's a fire in the engine. We want to stop fuel from getting to the engine to make the fire worse, right? So mixture, cut off, throttle, idle, fuel pump off, fuel selector, and then heater defroster. So how you can think about this is I'm kind of going right to left. I'm making a circle. Mixture, throttle, fuel pump, fuel selector, back to heater defroster, and then pitch for V&O and bank 30 degrees. Okay. Um, the pitch for V&O, you're really going to have to get that nose down like minus 10 degrees or even more to get to that VNO. And we're banking 30 degrees to keep the smoke out of our eyes, right? So we can actually see where we're going. When we're in that bank, you can also start looking for a field if you can. Uh, most examiners aren't going to extinguish your fire until you hit VNO. So if you kind of half, half ass it and don't really get down to VNO, you're gonna not have a lot of time to figure out where you're gonna land. Okay. So which one do you wanna do first? Let's just do the... Uh Engine out. All right, cool. So, how uh, what this is going to look like? Um, and uh, do anything you can to follow the checklist, but just never touch the mixture. Like you can turn the yeah, fuel yeah. pump on, you can go to the fullest tank, you can do whatever you need with it all. Just don't touch the mixture. Yeah. Some people do it, so it's got to make sure. Make sure cut off. You'll probably see me guard it as well, just to make sure. Some people have literally done it, killed the engine on accident, and you have to try to restart it. So. Cool. All right, so engine failure is going to look something like this. The examiner is going to come out, cut your throttle, and be like, all right, simulated engine out. All right, pitch your best slide. Yeah, pitch and then trim for it, right? We want to take off as much workload as we can. So get to that 76, and then while we're getting to 76, start looking around, find us a place to land. 16 nautical miles nearest airport. That's not going to work. That's probably so, not going to happen. I like that you did that, though. Uh, we're going to get one of these fields behind us. Not a whole lot of wind today, so landing direction isn't as important, but if you've got a big headwind or downwind, just, you know, Fuel pump. you can land with the downwind, just know it's going to increase your landing distance. Fuel selector, fullest tank, I'll go to the right tank, it's fullest. Prefer to land with the headwind. Cool, we did that. Fullest tank. Now the cycle of magnetos. Okay. And then open all there. Yep, so that was, boom, open that. So if like a bird or something got jammed in there, or there was ice or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, that's a great field right there. Yeah. Right, and then now it's Quark 7700, 121.5, Mayday, Mayday. 
engine out, landing 16 miles east of McKinney. Majors. But, Majors. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so what I like to do for this, go ahead and click on the emergency landing piece. Just do one or two things. Always, we, we want to spend most of our time looking outside. So don't right. get married to, I need to do the entire emergency landing checklist once I start. Declare, squawk, declare, look up, okay, I'm good. Then we can go next, seat belts. Seat belts, those. Here, panel switches all off. And again, we're training for commercial right here, so it's not always going to be me and you. If you have any passengers, we want to make sure everybody's got their feet seat belt fastened and secured. Throttle idle. Mixture cut off. Now at this point, we're just securing the airplane. Mixture yeah, yeah. off, magnetos off, fuel selector off. Flaps as required. Turn the battery and alternator off so there's less chance of an explosion whenever we land. And then cabin door will unlatch that whenever we get closer so that you know we're kind of in an aluminum can right now. Yeah, yeah. We want to make sure that I'm just going to clear the engine, keep doing your thing. We want to make sure we don't get stuck in here. Okay, that's it. be pretty hard for you to fit out this little window right here. This one? Yeah. All right, which field? That one, with the lake. Oh, okay, I like it. So you're kind of coming in out and extending, going to do an S turn to bleed off some altitude. Yeah. You can also start adding in flaps, like if, especially if there was not like a forest or something behind that tree line, and we really needed to make sure we needed to get in that field, you could add some flaps and then start slipping down to our point. I think I will, because we're high. Also, keep in mind, we want to recover by no later, no lower than 500 AGL, so about 1,050, 1,100 feet, we'll recover. But go ahead and do what, you, do what you're doing now, just pretend like we're going to land. I'm going to clear the engine periodically. There's plenty of field. Yeah. I would slip that down. Yeah. So. Cool. All right. Go ahead and recover. Up. Good job. Another thing I like to point out, your mic controls for a second. Another thing I like to point out when doing these is if you look at the POH, we have a glide performance chart. And on a standard day at like 2,300 pounds, you can glide about two, two miles per thousand feet. That's with no wind. So that's like your absolute best case scenario. So whenever I'm picking a place to land, if I'm trying to go to an airfield, I'm keeping that in mind. And most likely, I'm going to be able to get about a mile, maybe a mile and a half per 1,000 feet. If I have a downwind, that's going to vary. If I have a headwind, you can cut that in half. Good. I like that. Good flow. Take your time with it. We started that one really high. You're probably not going to always start those at 4,000 feet, but yeah. that's a good good one to start at just so you can like get a feel for it and get the flow going. All right, your control. So let's climb up to 3,000, and then we'll do something different. Let me grab my water. Good to go? Yeah. All right, so next one we're going to practice is going to be engine fire. So what's going to happen here is the examiner, your instructor, is going to say, all right, I see some simulated smoke coming from the hood. Roger. What are we going to do? All right, so mixture cut off. Yeah, so obviously don't do that, but mixture, what's next? Uh, so mixture throttle, yep, fuel selector. Fuel pump. Fuel pump. And fuel off. selector. Fuel selector off, and then heater defroster off. All right, let's pitch for V&O now. And then bank in third. Uh, two, three miles. See how low we're having to go. Not quite that much. Not quite that much. Pull up a little bit. Yeah. He'll get there. There we go. There's 120. All right. V&O. We're right at it. Go ahead. Fires out. Lost about 800 feet in that. Tally ho. Would we try to restart an engine that just caught on fire? Never. All righty. So now we're going to pick a place to land. Fields to the left. Looks like forest to the right. We'll go left. I like this field behind me right there. All right. We'll do a slow turn because we're kind of high. I like it. 121.5, Squawk 7700. Go click the emergency. Always reference your emergency landing checklist. Don't just go off memory here. Okay. Emergency landing, yep. Also, pro tip, 121.5, if I hold this button right here, it'll put 1215 in there for me. Dang, that's crazy. Good to know. And then you can squawk and then declare. 
Alpha, where are we at? Eleven miles. We could just say we're like just east of Lake Tawakini too. Yeah. Okay. Just east of Lake Tawakini. All right, and then what? And then uh, seatbelt secure. Show harnesses, panel switches all off. Yeah. And then throttle idle, mixture cut off. That's already done. Magnetos are off. Fuel selector. Off. That's already off. Flaps is required. Battery alternator off. Cool. Go ahead and recover. Also, when we're doing these, look, keep a lookout for these towers on your MFD. We don't want us to fly anywhere near these guys. Right. I had eyes on that one, so we were good. But and when you're being examined, there's something to keep in mind. Cool. All right, so that's engine like fire. Winds out of the north, if you look All right, cool. So electrical fire of this scenario is going to be, at least on my check ride, was they see some simulated smoke coming from the circuit breaker area down. here. So this yep. checklist is pretty straightforward, right? Battery, emergency battery arm, battery and alternator off, want to stop producing electricity. Vents close them, and this just changed on the checklist, by the way. Vents close, heater defroster off, extinguish fire, and then we reopen the vents. Increase airspeed if needed, emergency descent if needed, and then land as soon as possible. Okay. So what does as soon as possible versus as soon as practical mean to you? As possible is like, if we see a field, we're landing in that. Practical is, you can hold off until we get to the next airport. Okay, so for, for electrical fire, we extinguish it, we're gonna put it down in a field? Yep. Cool. This is just a small taste of what our flight training looks like. If you want the full experience, give us a call or visit thrustflight.com.